I'll be introducing you to Mod Organizer 2. I'll talk about its main features, what sets it apart from the other tools, and why it's invaluable. We'll install and download our first mod as well. Mod Organizer 2 is what's known as a Mod Manager, and like its name suggests, it manages mods. Alright, cool. Simple, right? But what's that even mean? To understand that, we have to talk about what modding is in the context of Bethesda titles. When we mod Skyrim, what we are doing in most cases is placing files in the game's data folder. If you're following along with my guides, you should know where that is on your computer by now. Generally, what these files consist of is a plugin file and an archive file. The plugin file names end with the extension .esp in most cases, but they can also end with .esm or .esl. Generally speaking, they all do the same thing. Tell the game the changes made by the mod we're using. There are minor differences between these three file types, but at this point, they're not important to us. Archive files consist of assets used by the plugin file and have a .bsa extension after their name. Assets include things like textures, meshes, the wireframes that the textures are on, scripts, code used by the game engine, and so forth. BSAs are their own unique libraries with specific folders and files arranged in a specific order for the plugin file. BSAs are not actually necessary for plugin files to function, so long as the mod contains the files in the correct folders, everything will work as intended. When there are folders contained in a mod like this, they're called loose files. Obviously, if the mod doesn't add any new assets, neither of these are needed. Again, BSAs have a minor difference between loose files in the way that they are used by the game, but we don't need to get into this at the moment, so don't worry about that yet. These two files are the bread and butter of most mods, but other extensions that can be necessary for a mod to properly function include .ini files, .exe files, .jar files, and a few other extraneous examples I'm sure. INI files are settings used by the mod in text document form and can usually be left alone when modding Skyrim, but the others usually require specific steps for proper mod installation. None of these are anything that you should be remotely worried about yet at this point in your modding career, but they do show up in a few mods here and there, so just know that they're necessary for the mod to work correctly. You may also find some other loose files in the mod. These generally include documentation in the form of a .txt file or other word processor file. Some mod authors also like to include pictures to demonstrate changes made by their mod. Both of these are just there for you to read over and compare. Nothing that actually affects how the mod works. Okay, so why did I just give you this info dump and what does it have to do with mod organizer or other mod managers? Good question. In the wee olden days of Bethesda modding, it used to be that we had to move files into the game's folder by hand, through the file explorer or whatever it was called on the older versions of Windows. Here's the problem with that. What happens when two mods modify the same file? Well, what happens is in that case, the modder has to decide which file takes priority and overwrites the duplicate file. This, of course, deletes the other version and now it's nowhere to be found. In and of itself, this isn't a problem, but let's say you uninstalled the mod that overwrote the file. This causes issues when the first mod needs to access the asset. So how do you get it back? You go re-download the mod and reinstall. With a few mods, this is practical, but imagine you're working with a hundred mods and each overwrites the previous. What you end up with is a giant chain of conflicts, so when you want to uninstall one mod, you have to reinstall the rest. Of course, this is impractical, so modders came up with a solution. Mod managers. These remember all the files associated with each mod, so you can uninstall and reinstall them freely. They replace files that were deleted because of overwrites, and all you have to do is click one or two buttons. No more manual reinstalling or hunting for all the files associated with each mod. Great. Everything's daisy then. Go out and choose whichever mod manager you please. As long as it's Mod Organizer 2. Here's why. Debugging conflicts. Seriously. That's it. MO2 of course has a whole slew of other awesome and helpful features. 
But in the grand scheme of things, this is the big one right here. Remember those conflict overwrites we were talking about earlier? Well, just because a file is overwritten doesn't mean that everything works as intended. File A could overwrite B and work just fine, but B could overwrite A and cause crashes, or a whole plethora of other issues. Conflicts are best avoided where possible, but when you're using hundreds of mods, they're basically a fact of life. So when they happen, you want a mod manager that allows you to find the mods that are conflicting quickly and painlessly. That way, you can resolve the issue and get back to playing. That is why we're doing this after all. So how does Mod Organizer install mods? Unlike other mod managers that extract mods into the game's data files, something equivalent to tossing together a salad, MO2 keeps the mods in their own separate folders that are out of the game's directory entirely. That way, when it comes time to uninstall the mod, you don't have to pick out all the ingredients individually. They're all in one neat pile. What this also does is keep your game's data folder in an unmodded state, but also, more importantly, this allows you to change the mod's installation order without actually having to uninstall or reinstall anything. Real powerful and time-saving stuff right there. Before you ask how to install mods without actually modding the game files, yes, it is done with magic. Also known as a VFS or Virtual File System. Each time you launch the game, a new virtual game directory is generated, so with one simple mouse click, the first mod you installed can turn into the last one you installed. The drawback of this virtualized nature is a longer initial loading time when launching the game, but aside from that, you should see no other slowdowns. Trust me when I say that Mod Organizer 2 is basically the holy grail of modding. Enough with the information though, let's go ahead and download Mod Organizer 2. Go over to the Mod Organizer 2 Nexus page. As you can see, its mod number is 6194 for special edition. All links for this video are down below as always too, if you want to make your life a bit easier. I always recommend reading over the mod's description page, so go ahead and do that. Especially pay attention to the FAQ section if you encounter any problems during installation. MO2 has a tendency of being flagged as unsafe by antivirus programs because of its VFS nature, so refer back to the FAQ if you encounter that. We're going to head over to the Files tab and hit Manual Download on the Installer version. If you know how to unpack archives and prefer that method, you can always do that as well. I just find installers easier to work with. Note too that you will also need an account on Nexus Mods to follow these tutorials, so go ahead and make one. I also put a link in the description. Making a new account on Nexus is kind of like navigating a maze of donation links, but it is free, I assure you. Go ahead and find the Mod Organizer 2 installer. For me, downloads go to the User Downloads folder, but yours may be set up different. You should definitely know where that is if you're following these guides. On Chrome, you can always run it directly from the browser once the download is finished, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Accept the agreement, hit Next, and select the folder you want to install to. It will have a location chosen by default, but I suggest avoiding it and installing it to the Mod Utilities folder we made in the last video. There are two places that you want to absolutely avoid installing MO2 in. That's the Program Files directories on your C drive and your Skyrim Special Edition game folder. My advice is to install it in the same drive as the game, and in the same directory as the Steam library. Right now for me, that's on C because I'm working with two game installs for these tutorials, but ideally it's on another drive altogether. Again, refer back to my previous video. In this case, do as I say, not as I do. Make a new folder, it will be named MO2 by default, which is fine for us, so we're going to keep it. Hit OK and Next. Keep everything as it is here. We're going to set MO2 to handle Nexus links manually, so we don't have to check that. Hit Next. I don't use Start Menu shortcuts, so I'm going to check this box. But if you do, feel free to fill this stuff out. Next. For this tutorial, we're going to create a desktop shortcut, so go ahead and do that. You can always find the Mod Organizer 2 EXE file in the install directory and pin it to your taskbar if you prefer. Basically, just make sure that you can quickly launch MO2 as you're going to be using it, loads, next, and install. Wait for MO2 to install. 
We want to launch the program, so keep that checked and finish. Now MO2 will ask if you want to store mods and other profile information in the app data folder. I suggest avoiding that as it separates your files into multiple folders. For the sake of cleanliness, it's nicer to have it all in one. Also, in this tutorial, we'll be setting this to portable, so there's that. It's going to ask us for the path to the game we want to mod, so we're going to find Skyrim Special Edition. For you, it will likely already be on this list. You can check by looking at the game folder path right below it. I'm going to browse for another install. If your game didn't show up, you'll have to browse for the game's folder as well. Emma will ask us if we want to see a tutorial. We're going to say no, as I am your tutorial. I honestly feel that there isn't enough information in it to be too viable, but I guess you can always go through it if you wish. Keep in mind though that it will have you install a mod of your choosing. I'm already going over that here, so there's really no need. Finally, we'll be asked if we want MO2 to handle Nexus links, and we're going to say yes. This will allow us to download files directly to Mod Organizer from Nexus, without first having to go through our browser. It's really convenient. Definitely do that. And we're in! This is Mod Organizer 2. It may look intimidating right now, but I assure you it's quite user-friendly. I'll be going over its UI more in depth in the next video, but for now, I want you to click on the screwdriver and wrench icon. This will open up the MO2 settings. Go to Nexus and check Automatically Log into Nexus. Enter your Nexus username and password here. This will allow you to easily download mods with Mod Organizer 2 without annoying login pop-ups. You can also have MO2 handle Nexus links by pressing this button in case you missed it before. Go ahead and close. Okay, let's download our first mod. Unlike the Mod Organizer tutorial which lets you choose, I'm going to have you download a mod that you will definitely need. Go ahead and find the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch. It's number 266 on the Skyrim Special Edition Nexus. Like its name suggests, it patches bugs in the Special Edition version of the game. And boy let me tell you, there's a lot of them. It's an essential mod for any load order, and it's also required by some other mods to function. There's really no excuse not to be using this mod. As always, don't be lazy. Read over the description. Don't worry, it's short. Click on all the helpful embedded links and skim those. Etc, etc. Alright, head over to the Files tab and you should see a wonderful little button that says Mod Organizer Download. Go ahead, click it. Because we've allowed MO2 to handle Nexus links, we should not see any downloads in our browser. If you pull up Mod Organizer though, and go to the Downloads tab in the right side panel, we should see the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch downloading. Once it's done, double click it. Hit Manual. We can see that everything is packaged correctly, so we can hit OK. Now, the mod is installed, and all we have to do is activate it in the left side panel. At this point, you can launch your game and play with the mod enabled. Because of the virtual file system used by Mod Organizer, however, we must launch the game from Mod Organizer itself. We have to do this every time we want to play with mods installed. In the upper right drop-down list, we can select Skyrim Special Edition and hit Run. At this point, the virtual file library will be generated and the game will start. Alright! You've successfully downloaded Mod Organizer 2 and installed a mod. Nice work. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button down below and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below as always. I reply quickly so your comment will not go unnoticed. The next video in this guide is to the left if it's out. And if you're new, watch the overview to the right so you know what this guide is all about. Catch you in the next one.